we give God the praise, we give God the praise, and we welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. We welcome you. Thank you for taking time out to come to worship. Let's go into the presence of the Lord and worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for who he is. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And he cannot stop loving you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is love. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for taking the time out to come into the presence of God with me at the Back to Basics online church. Hallelujah. Where God is reaching out. He's reaching out. He is pouring out his spirit upon us. And we thank God. Glory to God. I want to give a shout out to uh, my friends. Hey, Jeep girl out in Loveland, Colorado. Hey, Ryan Trogler up in and and Tara and Jenna up in Pennsylvania. Jackie Fisher in North Carolina. Megan in um, California. Dustina in, and her family in Tennessee. We want to give a, a shout out to Zisla and her family in Midlothian, Texas, and the many people who are listening by phone. And we give a shout out to all of you who will be watching the recording, the video. This is a powerful online church. It's powerful because the Holy Spirit is directing this ministry. Praise God. This is the Lord's ministry, and we're just his instruments. We were made by God, according to Psalm 139:14, to praise and worship him. That's why he made us, and we worship him in spirit and and in truth. So let's get about the business of doing what he made us to do. Don't worry about the pain, the sickness, the heartache, the trials, the challenges. God has the answer. He will show up. As the song writer said and as the singer let us know, don't worry about what friends might say. That sickness might be holding on. That problem might still be there. But God's got a healing for you. There's healing for your soul. There's healing for your sorrow. There's help for your, your situation. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. So you're at the right place at the right time. Ladies and gentlemen, you might want to turn to a family member or a friend and say, you're at the right place at the right time time. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Jackie and I, we want to wish you a wonderful day, and, and, and we worship the Lord. We're entering into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts and into his courts with praise. We're seeing God move in this online church. We're seeing God raising up an army of prophets, teachers, apostles, uh, evangelists, and pastors and missionaries, we're seeing the Holy Spirit move in the lives of people. We're seeing the Holy Spirit touching uh, the elder, elderly ones and the middle age as well as the young and the children. And we give God the glory. We give a shout out to our young friend Nathan and his sister Destiny and his brother Nikki. We give a shout out to uh, the family. We give a shout out to Dustina and Mike. We give a shout out to all of the people, Megan and all the people in California and Zisla and all of our wonderful friends in Texas. We give a shout out to Jackie Fisher. Hallelujah to Jackie Fisher. And we give a shout out to our friends overseas in many nations who watch these videos. We give a shout out to Boycott and all the people in eastern Kenya. We give a shout out to Bishop Elijah and all the people in western Kenya. We give a shout out to our friends in the, Camer in the nation of Cameroon, in uh, Belgium, in France, in England, in Jamaica, in Canada. We thank God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Praise God. There is a healer. He specializes. Right now he's healing somebody with a headache. We bind that spirit of infirmity and command that that headache be delivered. Go from that person in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit causing high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Release yourself from that person and go 
in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit causing pain in the leg and in the hips and in the knees. In the name of Jesus, depart and go. There is a healer. His name is Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Well, we bless God. We bless God. And we want to enter into prayer right now that God will take over this service and just move by his spirit. He's moving already. We want the Lord to have his way. We're going to ask our friend Ryan. Ryan, praise God, from Pennsylvania. Ryan, lead us in prayer. Would you please, Ryan? Uh, yes, Pastor Carter, I will do that for you. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to uh, thank you for making another blessed day. We want to thank you for giving uh, Pastor Carter the wisdom and knowledge to minister to us, to this online church. We want to bless this online church, and we just want to give you all the praise and glory. And bring your hands down to heal the sick and cure the blind and cure the deaf. And let's just have an awesome day in you again today, Lord. We praise you and we honor you and love you and honor you and glorify you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And God bless you and your household. Praise God. Amen. God is the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the mighty God. And we're going to get right into our teaching for today as we continue with this series on how to build a hedge of thorns around a loved one who is captured by the enemy, or how to build a hedge of thorns thorns or how to build a hedge of protection you can build a hedge of thorns around any loved one who is going waywardly you can build a hedge of thorns around your spouse if your spouse is not acting right if your marriage is going downhill you can you can save your marriage you can build a hedge of thorns you can shut that partner down if your partner's not doing right and ladies and gentlemen if you're not doing right you can build a hedge of thorns around yourself it takes great courage for a man or a woman to say Lord I'm not doing right I know I'm not doing right and 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 I need help for myself Lord I got this habit you know all about me you see God knows everything he sees everything he his eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth he doesn't miss a thing we can't hide anything from God and when we need deliverance when we I'm talking about the blood wash the tongue talking Holy Ghost filled believers when we stray from the Word of God and we need deliverance we can get deliverance we can deliver ourselves by practicing self deliverance I will teach you that as we continue in the weeks to come you can get yourself delivered if you know that you're the main reason why your marriage is not working you can build a hedge of thorns around yourself and I say build it and keep it there and do not ever remove it or if your partner's not doing right and you know your partner just uh, has a tendency tendency to uh, go off on periods of time and just uh, uh, just go astray you can build a hedge of thorns around that partner ladies and gentlemen if you've got children who are stubborn rebellious they don't uh, do a thing you tell them to do they are just they're grown they're smelling themselves they're grown and they won't do anything that you tell them you can build a hedge of thorns around them and God can cause them so much misery so much misery God will frustrate them in their attempts to be rebellious and they will have to yield and surrender they will come back to you apologetically and ask for forgiveness ladies and gentlemen we're talking about one of the most powerful weapons that the Lord has given to the church you don't get many of these teachings in the in the in the mainline church you don't get many pastors who are willing to venture out there and the step beyond the the, the dark hole and and go into the the, the higher realm uh, and and walk in deliverance many pastors are afraid of deliverance many know that if they start getting people delivered they've got to get themselves delivered well that's the truth how can you get someone else uh, delivered if you're 
are still in bondage, but these principles that we're teaching in the Word of God, they work. They work for me. They work for others. Ladies and gentlemen, they will work for you. If you will just trust in the Lord and, and apply the Word of God by faith in every situation, we're going to teach you, and we've been teaching for the last two weeks, how to build a hedge of thorns and a hedge of protection. We're going to continue in this. We're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to answer some of the questions you have, and we're going to just trust the Lord because God is waiting for someone to step out on his word. God is waiting on someone to say, I want to do this. God is waiting on someone who's bound up in drugs to say, I'm tired of this drug demon uh, killing me. I'm going to do something about my life. I'm going to ask God to build a hedge of thorns around me. I'm going to ask God to frustrate me so that I will not even desire drugs. I'm going to ask God to smack the taste out of my mouth. I'm going to ask God to bind that drug demon that has been influencing me. I'm going to repent of my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, you can help yourself. You can help your family. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about uh, how you can get your marriage uh, 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 changed. You can turn your marriage around. I've been counseling several people in their marriages, and I've been teaching them to build the hedge of thorns. And ladies and gentlemen, when you build the hedge of thorns by faith through your prayers to God, standing on his word, God steps in and he moves by his spirit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at some scriptures and why God has given us this principle to build a hedge of thorns. We're going to look at the scriptures. We're going to look at how this worked for others and how this will work for you. And then we're going to ask you to apply this. Apply it wisely. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to tell your husband that uh, 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 you're praying a hedge of thorns around him because once he knows you're praying that, he's going to rebel against you. Some become violent. Some become evil and angry. But do it subtly and do it wisely. Be wise as a serpent, meek as a dove. Praise God. You don't have to tell your children, I've built a hedge of thorns around you, and Jesus is going to uh, uh, humble you from being rebellious. You don't have to tell them that. You just build a hedge of thorns, keep on going along your merry way, and watch God. I say, watch God. My son, if he were on with us today, he'll be a witness. He'll be a witness that uh, the hedge of thorns works. It worked when he was a teenager. He asked me to take the hedge of thorns around him so that he could hit on a young girl. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to keep that hedge on you, around you. I didn't raise you to be a, 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 a baby maker. I didn't raise you to be messing up someone else's life. And, and, and I kept that hedge of thorns around him, ladies and gentlemen. He finished high school. He finished college. Now he's a teacher. He's got a family of his own. And he thanked me. One day he thanked me. He said, Dad, I thank you. You're, you were old school. You were tough. And you, you stood, stood your ground. And you would not yield. And he said, I want to thank you for being tough on us. I want to thank you for standing on the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this hedge of thorns works. It will work against your loved ones. It will work against your boss. It will work against your church. Church. If your pastor's not doing right, if your pastor's preaching one thing and doing another, you can bring your pastor to his knees and humble him and get him delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about using a powerful weapon that God has given us for the, the deliverance of our loved ones, the deliverance of the church, the deliverance of the government, the deliverance of the president. We can get the president delivered. We can get ourselves delivered. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at what the scripture says. I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, the scriptures and show you what happened in the scriptures, and then we'll take it from there, how to build a hedge of thorns. I know uh, some of it, this may be a repeat of what we've had, but ladies and gentlemen, redundancy is important in teaching the Word of God. Repetition is important so that we hear it and we hear it and we internalize it, we hide the Word in our spirit, and then we walk by faith. We walk by faith in the Word of God. We put our trust in what God's Word says. God said His Word will not return unto him void. 
It is impossible for the word of God to come back to God empty. So you stand on the word of God. You speak the word of God. You can speak the word of God to any situation confronting you. And you wait on the Lord and you'll see the deliverance. You'll see the healing. There's a bomb in Gilead who heals the sin-sick soul. The moment you receive Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, you receive the healer. You receive the balm of Gilead. You receive the Holy Spirit to live in you. He is the healer. Activate him. Let him rise up like rivers of living water. Ladies and gentlemen, don't quench the spirit. Let the spirit get out there and fight your battles. For you, like God told Jehoshaphat, the battle is not yours, it is mine, saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, let the Holy Spirit stand up in you and fight the battle. Let him fight that sickness. Let him defeat that disease. Let him defeat that cancer. Let him defeat that high blood pressure. Let him defeat that arthritis. He has never lost a case. He's a doctor in the sick room. I know I can get a witness. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. You don't don't have to fight. You don't have to go and buy a gun. You don't have to buy, you don't have to load your Glock. You don't have to load your assault weapon. Just load the M66. Fire the M66. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechari Zephaniah, Haggai, Zech Zechariah, Zechariah, Malachi. You can fire the M66. That's only 39 of them. There are 27 more. You fire the word of God at the devil, and the devil will flee from you. The scripture says, Resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. We're talking about building a hedge of thorns around rebellious loved ones. We're talking about being courageous enough and being real with God that if you have a problem, if you're secretly doing drugs, if you're secretly uh, doing alcohol, if you're secretly lusting after someone else's uh, spouse, if you're secretly disobeying God, you can shut that activity down by being bold, asking God, God, build a hedge of thorns around me and put the word of God on it and trust the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this. When you build that hedge of thorns around somebody, keep it there. Keep it there forever. I don't care how godly that person becomes whom you prayed for. Keep that hedge there so that that person will never, ever, ever be tempted again to go back into that ungodly activity. And I want to say this to you, to you also because I have done this myself. If you build a hedge of thorns around yourself, if there's something that you've been doing that you should not do, or some activity you're not supposed to be in, or, or some area where you're walking outside of God's word, build that hedge of thorns around yourself and keep it there. Ask God to keep that hedge around you for the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about radical Christianity, but it works. We're, they don't teach this in, 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 in little prayer services in the brick and mortar church. They don't teach this in the little Bible studies. They don't teach this at the uh, 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 everybody's birthday party. They don't teach this at the cakewalk. They don't teach this at the rummage sale. They don't teach this at the bingo games. But at the Back to Basics online church, we teach the Word of God because we believe in our hearts that the Word of God works. God's Word will not return until him void. So ladies and gentlemen, apply the Word of God and learn how to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I say, wait on the Lord. Put on that whole arm of God. You heard what Little Nathan said a few weeks ago, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. Gird your loins with truth. 
Put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Put shoes on your feet that will speed the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of the spirit, the shield of faith, wherewith you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. No matter what your friends may say, no matter what your neighbors may say, no matter what your family members may say, you hold up that shield of faith wherewith you wherewith you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God you can cast down all vain imaginations with the word of God you can shut down the devil when he tries to exalt himself above the word of God you can bring into captivity ladies and gentlemen every thought obedient to Christ with the word of God so let's look at Job Job again we go to Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. We're not, not going to read it all because we don't have time. Ladies and gentlemen, you reread Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. And then reread Hosea chapter 1, 2, and 3. Job chapter 1 and 2 and Hosea chapter 1, 2, 3 are the foundational scriptures for building a hedge of thorns. Then read uh, Isaiah. Isaiah uh, gives us a word about building a hedge of thorns we uh look at i I'm, I'm sorry ezekiel ezekiel not isaiah ezekiel 22 30 and 31 so your foundational scriptures are job 1 to 2 hosea 1 to 3 ezekiel chapter 22 verses 30 31 god says in ezekiel and i sought for a man among them who will stand in the gap before me and make up the hedge that I would not destroy them, but I found none. I repeat, God said, and I sought for a man among them, a woman too, Zizla. I sought for a man or a woman among them who would stand in the gap before me and make up the hedge so that I would not destroy the land, but I found none. Ladies and gentlemen, when you make up your mind like Isaiah said and say here am I Lord send me and if God says build a hedge of thorns around your husband build a hedge of thorns around your wife build a hedge of thorns around your child once you build that hedge of thorns leave it there and ask God to keep it there and you will see ladies and gentlemen you will see that person come back to their senses you'll see a uh, 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 joy come back in your marriage you'll see happiness back in your household you'll see healing you'll see deliverance you'll even see a change in yourself when you build that hedge of thorns around yourself ladies and gentlemen we're talking about uh, defending the gospel we're talking about standing against the wiles of the devil we're talking about shutting down evil we're talking about walking in the authority that God has given us when Jesus died on the cross ladies and gentlemen he went into hell and put a whooping on the devil he took back the keys to the kingdom that uh, Satan has stolen from Adam Jesus rose from the dead and he said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he said, I give you, I give you, ladies and gentlemen, he's given to us, the church, the born again, the blood washed believers. I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You can bind the devil by building a hedge of thorns around your loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, in Job, verse 9 of chapter 1, the scripture says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Then Satan says to God, But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. 
only upon himself, put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Satan challenged God about Job. Satan went to heaven and boasted that everybody on earth had, had denied God, had cursed God, and turned from God. But God said, oh, no, devil, you're a liar. Have you considered my servant Job? And, and Satan said, you know, Satan is a liar. He, could, he, he admitted he was a liar. He, he deliberately omitted Job. And Satan said, well, you, have, you, you know, you, you, you're protecting him. Uh, you, 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 now let me work on him a little bit, and I'll have him curse you. And, and God gave Satan the permission to test Job. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you some of the things you're going through, some of the things your children are going through, some of the things your spouse is going through, some of the things coming against your job, the threats against your home, uh, the terroristic threats that the devil's making about your health and your situation. These things may be because the devil has challenged God concerning your spirituality. The devil knows that you have given your life to Jesus, and now it's the testing period. The scripture says that the testing of your faith works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're being tested, it hurts. It's scary. It's not good. It, it's not a, it doesn't seem like it's good. When Satan tests you, there are times you're going through a test and you don't even know that the devil has challenged God about you. And God will give. He will often give the devil the opportunity to test you. Why? Because God, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Remember this always. God has the confidence in you. He's got the faith in the Holy Spirit in you to keep that which you have committed unto him. God has confidence, ladies and gentlemen. He knows you can't keep it by yourself, but the Holy Spirit, the Hagios Numa, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the, the third person of the Trinity lives inside of you. And God knows that that which he's planted in you, the Holy Spirit will keep as you partner with the Holy Spirit and walk in agreement with the Holy Spirit, no matter how hard the trial may come, no matter what people may say, no matter what the, the doctor may say, no matter what your mama says, no matter what your granddaddy says, no matter what your, your family says, God will keep you as you keep your trust in him. And so Job was challenged, and he didn't even know it. Job was going through a whole series of messes and didn't know what was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when we all have to be like Marvin Gaye. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Lord, what's going on? There are times we don't know what's going on. But ladies and gentlemen, as you stay in the will of God, as you pray, as you study your word, as you worship God, no matter what comes against you, the scripture says no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. That's a promise from God. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No sickness can prosper ladies and gentlemen no disease no cancer god is bigger than cancer no threat of divorce can uh, take you under god's got it you just keep your trust in the lord like job did when we look at job's story and all he went through he put his trust in the lord satan went to work right away satan began uh he killed job's kids he caused the roof to cave in on Job's children. He killed all of Job's animals. He took away Job's wealth. And, and then uh, Job lost everything he had, calamity after calamity. And then Satan went back to God. And God said, where have you been? Satan said, I've been on the earth, walking through, to and fro on the earth. i got everyone you've got. They've all turned their backs against you. They've all cursed you. They're all in rebellion. They're all following me. God said, no, Satan, you're a liar. Have you considered my servant Job? God said, I know you've, been t you've taken everything he's had. And, 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 Job said, and Satan said, well, it, you know, Job is not going to curse you because you've got a hedge around him. Ladies and gentlemen, this hedge is so important. God built a hedge around Job. 
and Satan even recognizes it. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan recognizes the hedge of thorns. He respects the hedge of thorns. He can't do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll try to get you. He'll reach for you, but he can't. The hedge of thorns is a, a growing, living bush that God builds around you. It's, it's impenetrable. Satan cannot penetrate it. Animals cannot penetrated snakes cannot crawl through it the briars will repel them ladies and gentlemen this hedge of thorns that you build around your loved ones the devil can't penetrate the drug dealers can't get to them the whores can't get to your your husband the 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 pimps can't get to your wife the the liars the deceivers can't get to your loved ones they can't get to you even uh, your family members who who are known to manipulate you and and and, and they lie in your face and, and they like uh, lie in your face and stab you in the back when your back's turned they can't get to you and ladies and gentlemen another purpose for the hedge of thorns is that you cannot get out you might be jonesing for some drugs you might be jonesing uh, for uh, some sex with your neighbor's wife you might be jonesing uh, uh, to meet that uh, that man uh, in 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 the park, you might be you might be crying out. Your body may be aching, and you may try to get out. You got in your car and you try to go and meet someone for lunch. You might want to do that me and Mrs. Jones thing, and you can't make it. A car accident might prevent you from getting to that place. Uh, a roadblock might be there. Uh, 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 that person may be late, or or the phone dies the computer doesn't work the the gps system won't work you lose your way ladies and gentlemen the heads of thorns will cause the enemy to not be able to penetrate and reach your loved ones the enemy cannot penetrate and reach you and you cannot get out of that hedge every time you want to those briars in that hedge will repel you ladies and gentlemen the hedge of thorns works use it oh I pray that the church will use the hedge of thorns and 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 get their families delivered I see so many people in the chat window in many of our online churches I see the prayer requests. I see things people are praying for that they could pray for themselves if only they would just stretch out on the word of God and employ the hedge of thorns. There be deliverances after deliverance after deliverances after deliverances. God wants to stretch forth his mighty hand to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants your family in harmony. God wants your marriage to be successful. He wants your body to be healed. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, ladies and gentlemen, he said, all power has been given unto me. Jesus stripped the devil of all his power. The devil is powerless against you and cannot do these things. So know who you are in Christ. You may say, well, Pastor Gard, if the devil so uh, lost all his power, why is he still doing all that he does? Because he's got an army that is bent on doing the will of the devil. He's got a host, an innumerable number of demons, powers, principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. But when you build the hedge of thorns, these demons, these powers, these principalities, these ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness, they flee, they flee, they flee. They respect the hedge of thorns. They know that the Lord is in it. They know, they know that the Lord has a hedge around you. And so the devil came back to, G, to, to God and said, if you take your hedge from around him and let me touch his body, you let me put something on his body. He'll curse you. And ladies and gentlemen, the devil is so shrewd. He knows that if he puts sickness on certain people, no matter how holy they are, they're going to denounce God. I've seen people get sick and turn from God. I've seen people get sick and turn from the church. I've seen people, even if they get a hangnail, they break a nail. They break a fingernail, Megan, and they stop going to church. I don't want people to see me with my fingernail broken. I mean, people get caught up in stupid stuff. And they had to let stupid stuff keep them from praising the Lord. And so God said to Satan, you can touch his body, but you better not take his life. And, and Satan went back and, and realized that God had to remove the hedge of thorns from around Job. 
and Satan began to work on Job, hit his body with sickness and disease, boils, pus running down his body, no comfort, no peace, blood and pus running out of his body. He even had to move out of his house. He moved onto the town dump. He was sitting on the town dump. He moved out of his house, sitting on the town dump with Boils all over his body from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head, ladies and gentlemen. And, and even the dogs came to lick his wounds. That was the only medical treatment. The only Medicare, medical care that Job had was the dog licking his wounds. And even his wife, his wife came to see him at the town dump and said, See, you're not the man of God you thought you were. And she was... Satan got into her. Satan stole his wife. She said, you see, you're not the man of God. You, you, you're not the person we all thought you were. You need to curse God and die. And Job told her, you speak like one of the foolish women. And Job said, I believe, he made a statement. He said, I believe that my Redeemer lives, and I shall see him at the latter day standing upon the earth. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. He says, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord. And it was Job's faith, ladies and gentlemen, even in the midst of difficulty, even when his best friends came and denounced him, even when the church turned their back on him, Job maintained his integrity and, and continued to worship and praise the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, before it was all over, God rebuilt that hedge around Job. God gave him a new family. God doubled everything that Job had. Job passed the test. And ladies and gentlemen, you can pass the test. I know many of you are grieved because of what's happening in your marriages. I know many of you are grieved because of what your children are doing. Children have a way of embarrassing parents. I know I embarrass my parents. Children have a way of bringing bringing frustration and humility and shame on the household but be like job ladies and gentlemen maintain your integrity stand on the word of god trust the word of god and build a hedge of thorns ask the holy ghost to help you ask the holy ghost to help you in your situation move over and let the holy ghost take over i say move over and let the holy ghost take over well how can he take over uh, pastor carter he can take over when you ask God to build a hedge of thorns around your loved one. Ask God to deliver you from that sickness. Ask God to keep a hedge of thorns around you and stand on the word of God and let God fight the battle. Don't move from your position in Christ. Don't move. Don't take down. Don't turn from God. But let God do what, he, what only he can do. And let him take his time about it. Don't put a time limit on God. So many people I know have put a time limit on God. Well, God, I gave you six months and I'm still sick. I still got arthritis. I still need a hip replacement. Ladies and gentlemen, do not put a cap on God. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And then when you look at Hosea and read this on your own, chapters 1 to 3, you'll see that Hosea's wife went back out into the world seeking her lovers, living the lifestyle she lived before she married Hosea. She embarrassed the prophet. She embarrassed their children. She humiliated the household. She embarrassed the church. But yet Hosea maintained his integrity. He still loved her no matter what she was doing. But he employed, he employed, he employed this technique, this strategy that God is teaching us today. In Hosea chapter 2, verse 6, God said, I will hedge up her way. He said, I will hedge up her way. In other words, God said, I will build a hedge of thorns around her. She will seek after her lovers, and she will not find them. They will seek after her, they will not find her. And the result would be frustration upon frustration and frustration until she reaches a point where she says, I was better off 
at home with my husband. Let me return to my first husband, meaning her second husband was, was, was Satan. She turned to Satan. Let me return to my first husband. And she repented. Ladies and gentlemen, God built a hedge of thorns around Gomer, the wife of Hosea, and kept that hedge of thorns around her until she repented. She couldn't get out there, couldn't make that money that she was making. She couldn't get those things that, uh, the, those riches that her lovers had given to her before. And she actually dried up, ladies and gentlemen, to the point where her pimp put her on the block, on the auction block, and she was up for sale. The pimp realized he couldn't make any more money out of her. Nobody wanted her. She didn't look right. She didn't smell right. Couldn't do right. And so the pimp deserted her, put her up for sale. And then God told Hosea, now, your wife is being sold on the auction block. I want you to go and purchase her back. Whoo! The things that God tells us to do. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good, ladies and gentlemen. God told Hosea, go and buy her. Bid on her at the public auction. Bid on her. She was a sex slave. She was being sold. Bid on her. And, and God told Hosea, buy her back. He said, don't just bid on her, buy her back. And when you buy her back, bring her home. Allure her. Allure her. In other words, show her love. Show her love. Court her. Show her love. Don't be angry with her. Don't be angry. Uh, uh, don't beat her. Don't abuse her. And bring her back and let her live in the comfort of your home and just be patient. And let me work on her. And when you speak to her, speak words of comfort to her. If she says things that's ungodly, give her my word. But do it in love. Ladies and gentlemen, Hosea went out and bid on his wife, brought her back home. And, 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 and God healed that marriage. He restored that marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, there would be less divorces in this land and in other lands if we would obey the principles of God's word and win our loved ones back by building a hedge of thorns and walking in love, not in bitterness, not in hatred, not in jealousy, not in envy. Hosea is a prime example of what can be done when we obey God. The key to Hosea's uh, success and his wife's success was God built a hedge of thorns around Gomer. Hosea asked God to build. And when God speaks a word to you, ladies and gentlemen, like he spoke to Hosea, he said, I will hedge up her way. When God speaks that word to you, then you pray that word back to God. You ask God, God, build that hedge of thorns around her. Build that hedge of thorns around my husband. No matter how much your husband wimps and cries, and, and he might try to flatter you with flowers and and and. and candy and taking you to the restaurants and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, keep the hedge around him. Keep the hedge around him because Satan is slick. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen so many women deceived. Deceived. I've seen women have their husband locked up for abuse and, and physical abuse and then uh, the husband gets in prison and starts making all these phone calls all times of the day and night. He's crying, he's lying, he's deceiving, he's making her think that he loves her and he's sorry, he won't do it again. I've seen many women, ladies and gentlemen, bail their husbands out of jail and they fell for the okie doke. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lock your husband up, let him stay in prison until he sweats. Let him stay in prison until he walks around like the, the uh, ex-cons in Georgia do with one pant leg rolled up which uh, everybody knows they've been in prison. And not only have they been in prison, but they've been attacked by men. Let them get a taste of what, it's attack, what it means to be attacked by a man in a prison. And men, you don't have to go to prison if you'll do right. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to you ladies. Let him stay in jail until he sweats. I don't care how much he cries, how much he promises you. Keep the hedge around. So many women have removed that hedge and let that man back in. They've ransomed, uh, uh, they've, 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 they've ransomed 
their assets to bail that person out, get them out on bond. Ladies and gentlemen, I told my children when they were teenagers, you have one lockup, one, t one chance. If you get locked up, I'll bail you out if I think you were right. But if you're not right, you will stay in jail. I told my son, you'll stay in jail, and you'll know what it's like to be attacked by a man. I told my daughters, you'll go to jail if you're, if you're not right. I am not going to bail you out. We're talking about tough love. We're talking about building a hedge of thorns. And then you ask God to build a hedge of thorns around your loved one, that they will humble themselves before God, and they, they, they will cry out for God for a deliverance. And, 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 and you keep that hedge around them until they're delivered. And, and I say keep that hedge around them for the rest of their lives because that unclean spirit will always try to come back. But when God builds that hedge of thorns, the devil can no longer attack that person. And then God has a chance to deliver that person like God did for Hosea's wife. Hosea was able to teach her the word of God, to speak pleasant things to her and he walked in humility he walked in love ladies and gentlemen none of this will work if you maintain a spirit of bitterness if you have anger in your heart and bitterness in your heart towards your spouse or to your children or towards anyone you've got to repent of any bitterness you've got to confess your sins then ask God build a hedge of thorns what happens when you build a hedge of thorns well you see in Job's situation what happened you see in uh, Hosea's situation what happened. And ladies and gentlemen, I could just call out witnesses uh, from now until midnight of the many people I know who have employed this hedge of thorns and have seen God successfully, successfully destroy the adversary. I've, they've seen God successfully heal, deliver, rebuild the marriage, rebuild the family, Praise God. And I gave the example how my son years ago came to me and said, Dad, I want to thank you for being tough. I want to thank you for using tough love. I want to thank you for being old school, old fashioned in raising us. And it works. And now I see my, my son raising his family based on the same principles, trusting in the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves you. God loves you. He's not angry with you. If you have sinned, confess your sins. If you have made mistakes, confess them. And, and, and get on about worshiping God and praising God. And walk in love. Forgive your husband if your husband's done wrong. Forgive your wife if she's done wrong. Forgive your children. And if they continue to do wrong, build a hedge of thorns around them. In other words, give them up to God. Give them up to God and keep that hedge around them for the rest of your life. And you watch and see what God will do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our third of a series of how to build a hedge of thorns. And what happens? You can win back a wayward partner, a wayward family member. You can sanctify your family member for salvation by building a hedge of thorns. And while God has that hedge of thorns around that person, then you must walk in love with that person, no matter how much they hurt you, no matter how much your girlfriends and your buddies are saying, you ought to diss that chick, or you ought to get rid of that dude. No, don't, don't listen to what your family members are saying. You listen to God. Let the Holy Spirit do it. Move over and let the Holy Spirit take over. Move over, I say. Let the Holy Spirit take over. There's a bomb in Gilead. There's a healer. There is a healer. There is a healer. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The hedge of thorns works, ladies and gentlemen. You walk in the word of God. The word of God will not return unto him void or empty. This is Pastor Leroy Carter at the uh, Back to Basics online church. And I thank God, I thank God, I thank God for what uh, God has done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. I'm looking at what one of our 
members has written in the chat room, chat window. Amen. I wish I had the Lord in my first marriage and had and had him gone instead of taking the abuse then. Uh, but was trying to stay for the sake of my kids. Well, that's history now. It's water over the dam, but you learned a lesson. And God is not angry with you. And just forgive, I say, and, and they, I'm speaking to many women who have been in this situation. I'm speaking to men too. Forgive your first spouse. Forgive them. And forgive yourself for the, the things you did that were contrary to the will of God. Forgive. Release them and let them go. Now in your current marriage, live to the glory and honor of God. The key to this whole thing is forgive that person who abused you. Whether it was mental abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, whatever, forgive them. Just tell God, God, I forgive so-and-so. Call their name, I forgive so-and-so, and I release them unto you. And you walk in the beauty of holiness. And then thank God for your current marriage. Thank God. And you tell the devil, devil, you can't shut down this marriage. And, and if you see your current spouse going the same way your previous spouse, then you've got to break that stronghold. You build a hedge of thorns around that person. Stand on the word of God. You let the devil know, oh, no, devil, you try this once. I'm not ignorant of, ignorant of your devices. I cash you out in the name of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, when your husband is at work, you can cast out that demon out of your husband while he's at work. If your children are in school, you can call those demons by name and bind them and cast them out of your children. And if you're, your family's away and you're home by yourself and you know you've got something in you that's causing evil, evil thoughts, evil desires, evil deeds, you bind that evil spirit whether it's a lust spirit, a spirit of alcohol, a spirit of drugs, spirit of rebellion, you call that demon by its name, even if that demon is inside of you, and bind that demon and command that that demon leave in the name of Jesus, and that demon will flee from you. I get excited about this because I know it works. How do I know it works? Because God has blessed me to operate in this ministry for over 30 years. And God has blessed me even to uh, uh, employ self-deliverance, even to shut myself down when I was going in the wrong direction. It is no secret what God can do. Praise God. Well, uh, we pray that you'll uh, review this lesson, get the recording. Uh, the recording will be on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will send this out via email for those who desire it. And uh, it, also, it will also be on Facebook. God is putting this word out. And tell your friends, tell your family, look at this message, review this message, and, and ask God to help you. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants to help. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. Let us pray. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message. We bless you honor you and praise you. Thank you for the mighty things you have done, the things you are doing, and the things you will do. Bless this family, Lord, this family of believers all over the world. Bless them, God. Help them to see the results in their lives and help them to give the praise and glory and honor to you because your word says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. And we pray, Lord God, that you'll move mightily, stretch forth your mighty hand. And we love you. We honor you. We give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.